If you haven't seen part one, you probably should, because it's quite insightful to how Beyond works. In the previous episode, I mentioned there's a lot more to hosting an S13 server than just pressing go on Dream Daemon. Oh, that is very much true, so in this episode I plan to go into that. If you host a full-on, publicly accessible S13 server, you'll soon find yourself hosting a lot more than just Beyond. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. The main component of an S13 server is, of course, S13 itself, but even that has complications. Let's take our example from the first video of just downloading a zip of the code and running it out of the folder as an example. Yes, you have a running server, however you have several problems with this approach, most notably. You have to start the server every time your server machine reboots, which is less than convenient. There's no easy way of updating the code, especially since in this example we downloaded the zip, and either way you have to take the server down for updates. There's no remote access outside of giving access to the entire server machine, which you really don't want to do for things such as starting and stopping the server. No ability to edit configs or pull files without logging into the host machine itself. No easy bridge from the server to a Discord channel to get status updates or commands. And sometimes you might want to test an open PR without fully merging it for stability reasons or similar. And obviously you'd have to re-download the code zip for that branch, which could be out of date, or you have to mess about with git commands. Thankfully, there's a better way. Enter the TG Station Server Hosting Toolkit, commonly referred to as TGS. What started as just a folder of batch files has evolved into a fully-fledged, self-contained, easy-to-install server management suite. Its current iteration, TGS5, which is just TGS4 on .NET 6, and apparently TGS6 is going to be the same after .NET 8, solves all of the problems I mentioned before, and then some. Combine this with a retard-proof installer, and a web interface, oh, and an open API if you want to write your own doohickey, it's no surprise that most SS13 servers run on TGS. Let's go back to our problem list and go through each thing one at a time. You have to start the server every time your host machine reboots. Not only will TGS auto-start itself with your OS, assuming you're on Windows or if you're on Linux you've set it up properly, it can auto-start beyond on a per-instance basis. Wait, instances? Yes, TGS lets you manage multiple instances of Beyond on the same machine from one place. Think about how TG has Bagil and Sibyl, I know I've probably pronounced those wrong, I don't care, servers on the same box. Those are managed from the same pane, which makes it a lot easier to manage everything because you only have to go to one place. No easy way of updating the code. TGS not only provides an easy way of updating your code, but it can even do it automatically with zero downtime. It does this by having separate folders for the server, meaning it can seamlessly reboot between the two rounds. So you'll have game folder A, which is the current running server, and then folder B, which is an entirely different version of the codebase, but because they both exist, between reboots it can just swap from A to B instantly. And no, having multiple folders doesn't mean scuffed configs or logs or anything else. It sorts that for you. Oh, and if you want something that's meta as hell, you can even update TGS itself without it making your Beyond server go down. No remote access. TGS itself is designed to be remotely accessible, since at its core it's just a web app. Not only can you add individual users, but you can give users permissions on a level so granular it makes Discord look binary. Once given account the ability to only have restart rights and to only one instance, done. Once give maintainers full repo control, done. Want to give some people read-only access to files? Done. Don't even want to manage your own passwords and just want to log in with Discord or log in with GitHub button? Done. TGS is primarily accessed with one of two control panels. The first is a desktop one, which is old, slow, clunky to use, and generally shit, and is borderline deprecated at this point. The other, much more friendly one, is to use the web panel, which, as the name implies, you use from a web browser. It's a lot faster, you don't have to install shit, and it's just nicer overall. No easy bridge to Discord. TGS includes a native Discord bot, which has a few inbuilt commands such as getting test merge PRs, oops, I tease the next feature, but you can even implement custom commands inside the server codebase to do things such as return the round time, the crew manifest, is the shuttle on the way, all sorts of stuff like that with TGS's DM API. It's quite useful. Finally, testing PRs locally without merging them on the repo. As I mentioned in the Discord bot section, TGS lets you test merge PRs with relative ease. You go onto the panel, pick a PR number, select a commit, and press go. 
assuming it has no merge conflicts, it'll be added into the local server build without the need for any changes on GitHub. As a bonus, it will lock the PR test merge to the specific commit you set, meaning that if the PR author pushes another commit to, for example, make themselves admin or sport a pulse rifle on round start, it won't work. They can't do it. So yeah, as far as SS13 hosting goes, TGS is basically the stuff of dreams. It's even an enterprise grade and totally maintainable code base. It may have started as just an SS13 server manager, but has evolved to be compatible with anything that runs on Beyond. And we have one pothead to thank for it. I think it's fair to say that at this point it runs half the hub, and for good reason. The latest version is pretty much the gold standard, and there's absolutely no reason why any server would ever want to use v3 these days. What the f***? Anyway, that's just the Beyond server. Now you have to take into account all the other ancillary stuff SS13 servers have, including, but not limited to, a database, forums, wiki, discord bots, and PR mirror bots. Let's start with the database. SS13 runs on MySQL or an equivalent compatible server, with most hosts opting for MariahDB. Most SS13 servers, Goon of course being the exception, use a database directly in their codebase for some degree of storage. At one end of the spectrum, you have BaseStation, that uses their database purely for player notes and the in-game library. And for some reason, you need a fucking migration tool to make it. And then at the other end, you have Paradise and BeeStation, which store literally everything in the database. And then you have TG as a middle ground, which stores notes, the library, some extra logging and track- I mean, telemetry data, and probably some other stuff. Either way, even if your codebase can run without a database, you're better setting one up anyway, purely because the game will run better with it, TGS needs it, and the stuff I'm about to go into also needs it. And to address the elephant in the room, and the zoomers asking for a no SQL database, SS13 doesn't need to be web scale. Our developers also have brains, I think, and actually know what a relational database is. As far as I know, there is no Beyond Adapter for MongoDB, and I hope there never is. Now for the forums, since, well, they're such an important piece of a modern server, used frequently and for many purposes. SS13 servers tend to run on one of four forum softwares, depending on how much the host wants to spend. I should note, this list is non-exhaustive, there's likely an option I haven't mentioned. Remember, this is a guide to SS13 hosting, not a forum software comparison list. The first option is PHPBB. It's free, and it works as a forum, which, well, you'd hope so, but you do get what you pay for, with one of the biggest issues being the lack of a native OAuth server. For context, this is what powers those sign in with Discord or sign in with GitHub buttons on websites. TG wanted the ability to have a sign in with TG forums button on other TG web services, but the lack of a native OAuth server made this complicated. This then led MSO to write an extension just to support PHPBB being an OAuth server so they could sign into other TG services with the forums. If all you need is a basic forum, it works fine but do temper your expectations. It's a free product. Further up the chain, you have Zenforo. It's $160 one-time purchase, and it's pretty capable forum software while also looking nice out of the box. It is a little more featured than PHPBB, has a lot of extra plugins and support available if you need it. I don't really have anything more to say on this, I'm not super familiar with it. And then you have Envision Community. It's not the cheapest, costing $100 for the initial purchase of just the forums package, and then $40 a year for renewal if you want to keep getting updates and support, but out of the box it looks pretty nice, and there's a lot of stuff you can configure. Having native OAuth support is a godsend, and there are lots of plugins available, such as Patreon integration, so you can have pledges automatically sync. The ability to use both a HTTP REST API and an encode PHP API is an absolute godsend. We use this at Paradise for having seamless logins on multiple web tools, because you can just include the API in your code, load the user session, and then you can access user properties and groups and everything else in code without making tons of REST calls. It's really nice. Finally, if you're silly and want your forum to be the least intuitive thing in the world, and also require its own service because it's not PHP, you have Discourse. It's awful to navigate, 
doesn't feel like a normal forum, and quite frankly sucks, in my opinion. Seriously, try and use it when you're used to traditional forums. You'll cry. Thankfully, wikis are a lot simpler. All servers, as far as I know, use MediaWiki, which is the same software Wikipedia runs on. It's easy to navigate, easy for contributors to edit, and is generally accepted as the gold standard for wiki software, even if handling it from a hosting perspective is awful. There's no admin panel and you have to do everything in the config file. It's also not great for security, as seen by the events on Goon about a year ago. And their security policy is also kind of crap. They will send an email out about an upcoming security release and the issues it fixes, but then not release it for a few days, which basically gives any attacker a, hey, all these vulnerabilities exist and they're not being fixed for a few days, notification. Wonderful! One upside of MediaWiki at least, if you want to suffer with Python 2, which was deprecated many, many, many years ago, you can easily dump an entire wiki's text and images to a local file and import that into your own wiki. This is useful because it allows downstreams to easily clone an existing wiki and then tweak it to their needs without having to manually remake every page. On a quick side note, obviously for all these web things, you need a web server. And you basically have two options for this, Apache and Nginx. I'm not even going to name drop the Windows only web server here because quite frankly it doesn't deserve the recognition due to the suffering it creates. Anyway, most servers nowadays use Nginx and for good reason. It's a superior web server and has a lot of good config options compared to Apache. However, we, Paradise, use Apache for two very good reasons. First, I love the HD access file. I don't care, sue me. Second, I wrote a plugin for it that lets me authorize pages based on what forum groups the user is in, and this can be used outside of where I can use the forum code API. And this whole structure allows me to form role-based access control and restrict services to only admins and similar. Now we move on to Discord bots. You have two solutions, not including the TGS bot which we touched on earlier. You can either write your own, which obviously takes time but gives you much more control over things or you can use Redbot. Redbot is a base Discord bot made in Python and you can load in extra modules known as COGS. The go-to set for SS13 is Crost's COGS made by Crossfall of BStation. This COG set allows you to do admin related tasks such as look up notes, assuming you have the permission to, check in-game status such as players, basic ground info like the time, the shuttle, etc, and which admins are online. It also has the ability to link Discord users to beyond usernames, allowing server admins to require users to be verified. If you do extra setup, you can even have it compile DM code snippets in chat for testing, which really helps for development stuff. Finally, you have PR mirror bots. Most servers don't need these, but downstreams that want to closely mirror their upstreams, such as Skyrat Mirror and TG, need them. Very few exist, Yogstation had one a while back, and Hippie had one a while back as well, which became the go-to for PR mirror bots. While Hippie is a long dead codebase, their mirror bot lives on. It's quite simple. The bot watches the upstream repo, TG for example, and checks for when a PR is merged. And then once a PR is merged, it invokes a script, clones that branch of the merged PR into your own repo, and then opens that as a pull request on your own repo so it can be reviewed and then merged. There isn't really much more to say on it. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Apologies that it took, uh, seven months to do? Work has had me incredibly busy, combine that with an inability to focus on a lot of things. I've only just been able to sit down, write this, narrate it, and do all the editing. I was gonna do the writing a month ago, on a train journey that was gonna be three hours, until there were no seats available, and I ended up sat on the floor, in the end of the carriage, with no plugs or anything. Yay! Anyway, part three will be how the paradise infrastructure is made up, and goddamn, it's a behemoth. Links for everything mentioned in this video will be in the description below. I do want to quickly take a moment to apologize for the state of my voice. Uh, I have a cold at the moment, and I probably shouldn't be narrating, but I have a shred of motivation for once, so you bet I'm going to take advantage of it. Anyway, see ya.